OK, so here we have 5y divided by y squared minus 7y minus 4 divided by 2y minus 14 plus 9 uh, divided by y. So huh? what we're going to do in this problem is, so far what we've talked about is just adding and subtracting two rational expressions. And when we had just two rational fractions, we wanted to, or rational expressions, we want to make sure we had the LCD that exactly the same. So then we could just apply our operation to our numerator. And we usually only had to deal with two fractions, and it wasn't that bad. But now we're dealing with three rational expressions. However, the process is going to be exactly the same. We're just adding in an extra term. So I look at this, and I see my denominators are not the same. And they don't very look very close to being the same as well. So what we're going to do is first thing is let's simplify them as much as possible. So our numerators, none of our numerators we can simplify. However, our two denominators, it does look like we can apply some uh, simplif simplifying. So 5y. And if I simplify y squared minus 7y, I can factor out a y, which is going to leave me with a y minus 7 minus 4 over this denominator. I can divide out a 2. So I'd be left with a y minus 7. And then this rational expression, I really can't do anything with. All right. So we look at this and we say, all right, my LCD, we can see that two terms share a y minus 7, two terms share a y, and then one term shares a 2. So if I'm going to find the least common denominator that all terms can share, I'll write it over here. The LCD is going to be 2y times y minus 7. All right. If we can make that our least common denominator, that means every single one, all I need to do is multiply by some other terms for all of my denominators to share that value. So to get to that point, we need to look at each denominator and see what do I need to multiply by to get my least common denominator. So here, I only have a y, so I need to multiply by 2 and y minus 7. Over here, I already have 2 times y minus 7, so I just need to multiply by a y on the top and the bottom. Over here, I already have a y, so I just need to multiply by the 2. All right. Now, when I do this work, I already know that I'm multiplying to get my LCD. So I'm just going to make a nice big line, and I'm going to write my LCD in the denominator. All right. Then I'm going to apply my multiplication for each numerator. So I have 5y times 2, which is 10y minus 4 times y, which is 4y, plus, now I'm going to do a little work before, we have 9 times 2, which is 18. Then I need to apply the 18 in distributive property to both of my terms in my uh, binomial. So I have 18 times y, which is 18y. And then I have 18 times 7. Let me just do the work over here again. So I have 126. OK, now you notice that each one of these are a y, so I can combine them. So 10y minus 4y is 6y, plus 18y is 24y. Oh, that is actually a negative, right? Because 18 times negative 7, so that's a negative 126. OK, now what we notice is I, can divide the, I can't divide the y into both those terms. I can't divide the y minus 7 into both those terms. But I can divide out the 2. So if I divide a 2 into each one of my numer num um, numerators, I can make this into a 12y minus, uh, let's see, 63 over y times y minus 7. Then in my numerator, I can now I can look at this and say, all right, is there any common terms I could factor out? Well, yeah, you could factor out a 3. So if I factor out a 3 in my numerator, I'm left with a 4y minus 21 all over y times y minus 7. All right. Now, if we wanted to find the restriction, remember, we can just take our denominator and set it equal to 0. Well, since we have a product that's equal to 0, we can apply our 0 product property. So we set each factor equal to 0, and then we solve for our variable. So therefore, when y equals 0 or y equals 7, our denominator equals 0. So therefore, our restrictions are going to be y cannot equal 0 or positive 7. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add and subtract multiple rational expressions. Thanks.